Good morning, everyone. I'm out here with Willow and Daisy, and I just do have to say, Willow has lived up to her name ten times over with Wonder Willow. She's just a freak of nature. Look at her. I mean, obviously, you can tell she's had puppies very recently when you look at her from the side, but nonetheless, neat. I just, my mind is boggled by Willie. She's had, let's see, 26, 35 puppies, and of those 33 survived and the two that didn't were i know just meant to be in nature like the one litter she had 10 and we ended up with nine and i think it was the other litter there were nine and we ended up with eight but her final litter the one we weren't even going to do because i was worried about it she ends up with nine of probably among the most glorious of the puppies yet but even more important what i wanted to talk about is that i really feel Again, I'm not advocating people to breed four times. I wrestled with it deeply, but for us, it ended up the right decision. I even had, as I've mentioned, her appointment to get spayed, but I just followed my intuition because it didn't feel right. And in Willow's case, the one thing she's ever had wrong with her, uh, here, Willie, who wants a goodie? Which is not much, according to many people, it's nothing because it's the right way, is her little edge, her little, good girl, hold on girls, I'll give you a goodie, ish, but everything else about her, her confirmation, it's all remarkable, I mean, and uh, her bite is textbook perfect, which is important to me, and so far she's been throwing that to her puppies, which in the bully breeds we do need to care about because there have been bite problems here. And let me get you untangled. And let me go see. They saw a deer and Obi found me a naturally shed antler yesterday, which I'm going to tell you about. But yeah, Willow's just a freak of nature. But what I was going to say here, Daisy, is not only has she been angelic with Daisy throughout this whole time, I see a couple moments where Daisy really pushed and Willow just kind of gives her a subtle, subtle warning. It's just subtle. But Daisy luckily seems to be the kind of dog that just does not want to get engaged. It's funny, too, because you never know that because out at the shows, I don't know if it's just that we haven't had as much time to socialize her. She's great with other dogs, but she's a little bit like she'll go after some of them quicker uh, than, like, certainly quicker than, like, Ash or Shaq ever did, but um, not as quick as Willow. But uh, so I wondered, but she just, she doesn't mess with Willow at all. And what, a, she seems to read the signs of Willow saying it's too much, but their bodies and even more important, um, Willow has become, this is what I was going to say, like incredibly mellow. Here girls, careful on this little hill, just because they're not paying attention, but I want to walk a little loop around the winery, uh, itself instead of just up around the surrounding hills. Um, and then I got to get back. I, so yesterday I had a serious life, just crisis meltdown because there's just, just something had to give. And unfortunately it was work. So I just, like I say, I'll try to make up by adding a day um, just because I feel bad about canceling students. But I just could not keep up with the volume and I still can't. Like I've got a to-do list that's probably 20 items long and it's all different things in different directions. And I think... I just, that's where I was finally just like, this is too much because I'm trying to keep up the perfect standards with the puppies. But yeah, I think having the puppies for Willow this time has mellowed her out. She's the most chill I've ever seen her with her puppies. And uh, there's a little pretty shot of the winery. Let's go back this way, guys, and we'll go get some goodies at home. And I just could not be more proud of her. I think this has just eased her temperament. I'm actually a little sad to get her spayed, but I'm a believer that why have, you know, vulnerability to pyometra. I know many breeders never spay their females, but I don't agree with that. I think it is actually better to spay after you're done breeding. There has been some minor, uh, I would say, correlation or, you know, maybe even stronger than correlation, suspicion that neutering can make dogs more aggressive with other dogs um, spaying and or metering, but I think it might have been specifically talking about spaying of female dogs. But the thing is, is I'm not worried about that because I've never noticed it with any, and we've spayed all our females, either when they never had puppies or uh, after having puppies, from Dobermans to um, Staffords, and no one's noticed that. Uh, and I probably could ask Jay and Jennifer if Sammy's mom, Willow's mom, Sammy, because she had a tiny bit of an edge if it made her more so, but I doubt it. Anyway, what I also want to tell you guys about, which is 
a story I forgot to mention yesterday on my video is, um, so yesterday I wasn't thinking clearly and I was just so exhausted and I had all four dogs. I left Asher home, but I had all four dogs on a walk with me. So the three Staffords and Obie, and I was thinking, how can I make my life easier going forward? Because Al does go out of town periodically, and of course it's always the worst timing like now, and I just, I feel compelled to walk our dogs. We have so much harmony in the pack now, and I really believe that these kinds of things are integral to that. So I went ahead and walked them all, but as I was thinking, I thought, you know, I think I can let Daisy off the leash, because She's real good with wanting to stick by us, and so far she doesn't have that. She'll chase down things like especially the cat, but she doesn't have that little crazy bunny drive. Like when these guys see bunnies, Asher and Willow, or deer, they go berserk. Daisy just kind of like, what the heck, you know, and she'll bark. So I was right. I let Daisy off. I had her on a long biothane lead, like five feet, and uh, then I had the other two on this double walker, Shaq and Willow. And then it occurred to me that because Shaq and, I think Shaq and Asher, I was worried they had kennel cough, but I absolutely think they do not, because now there's pretty much no cough, and it was only for a week, but those two were the ones who got the most swimming in, and they were really swimming heavily near the end on those hot days, and we have a saltwater chlorine pool, which again, I believe is anything, kills bacteria and is good for dog skin and all, but probably too much salt water and chlorine coupled with bad air quality and a couple other things could get to it. But anyway, Shaq started coughing only right at the beginning of our walk. She didn't cough at all during exertion or anything, which again, Al and I, he just doesn't read the signs. So he just has always a different interpretation uh, and thinks that's because she's getting older, but she was actually less coughing with the exertion. It went away after like, you know, a minute at the beginning so then I was so freaking tired you guys that you can't see from here but there's a big hill behind there I thought you know what I'll let Shaq off near the end she'll stick with me with cookies and but bear in mind now she's 13 almost and the last time I did this she was nine and she took off like a bat out of hell all around over by the winery and I caught her because I saw her and she came back to me after her little joy run but here she is 13 so I thought and I wasn't thinking clear, obviously, but I'm like, well, I'll let Shaq off now and I'll put Daisy on because it'll be good for Shaq's throat not to pull because she was pulling a little because, see, I usually have them on harnesses, but because of Willow and the breeding, I've been keeping them on the little leads because then they match and it's more balanced when I walk. So anyway, I decide to let Shaq off and honest to God, when she figures out she's free, she put the pedal to the metal so fast that... I couldn't even get her because I wasn't about to run down a hill. Up a hill is one thing, but down a hill I would have wiped out. So anyway, long story short, that bad dog was gone for an hour. I had her buried about three times over, and this was supposed to be my mental health day off. And I was like in tears. I had Jace, who was filling in for Lexi, uh, come with me and look for her as well. And ultimately, Asher or I mean, Obi kind of found her, kind of. I mean, he was looking over at one area and she had gone way over there. There's some people's bordering property kind of near the path we usually walk because I was going back down that path too. She didn't turn out where we left her, which is what they usually say happens, but where they take off is where they usually emerge. But in her case, she's just so used to that path. I figured she might do something like that. And because it was only maybe not even 70 degrees, but when I got our other dogs in the car, they drank so much water. I actually had to drive home first and come back with just Obi and Jace. Um, and uh, when I got, yeah, Daisy, I think I had Daisy and Willow with me and they got in the car and drank so much water. I was then really scared for Shaq, but sure enough, I think she went to someone's house to get, uh, to get water. All right, girls, we're going to go for a car ride. One thing that happened that was interesting on that, and I'll close the video, is Obi found me about a $30 naturally shed antler. Daisy, and Daisy eats so much stuff, you guys. God, I'm amazed she just isn't, she must have the strongest immune system from every crappy thing she's put in her, uh, in her mouth. But anyway, yeah, so Obi found me a naturally shed antler. And this morning we also saw deer. That's why we always kind of pumped up but that's a beautiful antler and I'm gonna just put it in a little dish soap and let it dry out um although I'm sure it's fine even without that because it's so natural and you know what's gonna be 
uh, toxic on a deer antler, but still. All right, anyway, guys, that's it. A little bit about Willie.